So you just invested what twenty three thousand yeah. on the kiosk in a couple months. It already made it what? Today we have an amazing story of someone who is continuing his family's legacy. Joseph is about to take over the fruit cup business from his dad who has been doing this for over 25 years, man. He's an OG. But Joseph doesn't just want to take over. He has a dream to make this into an empire and is already making it happen. They have two concession stands, one ice cream shop, and just invested into the kiosk business. And he is killing it. But you'll also get a lot of tips on how to get more sales. And of course, you'll see how much he made in one day, just in case you think this is a business for you. And if you like the ride along videos and you wanna see more, all I ask is that you watch until the end because it really helps the channel. So I'm on my way to Fresno to get some free 99 knowledge on this whole fruit cup business and let's see if there's money in it. This is how you do it right here, man. Yeah, man. You tell it from the commissary, which commissary is kind of like a location where, you, where you're where certified to prep your, your cart. So the very first thing you have to know about this business is that you need to prep the food a day in advance at a business location. That's right. You can't prep anything at your house. Why? Because you need a commercial location that can pass inspection. And the next thing you need is a trailer he bought his used for about $5,000, and I know, it sounds like a lot, huh? But we haven't even talked about the licenses, the fees, and the expenses that come with this business. For example, you know how much he pays for rent just for this one spot? A lot. So let me ask you, uh, I, I, you need a permit and everything for this yeah. stuff, but do you pay a lot for rent? Oh, bro, it's expensive. Really? When you, when you pay a lot, you make a lot. The oh. Location is key in this business, so I mean, I pay eighteen hundred here. A month. month. Eighteen hundred. Yeah. But I mean, you must be making a profit yeah. if yeah. you've been doing this for so long. Yeah. You know what? I don't say this often, but I think I'm in the right business. The concession stand might not be for me, but then the customers start coming in, and I saw Joseph do his magic. He showed me his technique of how to make more money per transaction and it's one of the oldest tricks in the book. And let's see if you could hear what it is. Hello miss, good morning. Hey, can I get a cup of tea? Yes, please. You want to do any hot dogs? Any tamales today? What kind of Chicken beef and pork. Chicken and pork. Did you hear it? If you said the upsell, you'll be right. Instead of selling a hot dog for $3, offer a combo, a soda and chips, and you just turn that $3 sale into a $5 sale. Everybody in the East Coast, yeah. we don't really like mustard in California. No? In the East Coast, they don't like mustard? No, no in the East Coast, they like mustard. In the West Coast, yeah. yeah. We like ketchup. Yeah. Joseph is trying to build his concession stand empire. His goal is to have dozens of concession stands out there making him money. But he knows before that happens, you need to start small and grind. Right now, he has two concession stands, an ice cream shop, and just invested into the kiosk business. But let me show you what it really takes to be an entrepreneur. Because if you really want to become your own boss, this is exactly what it takes. He gets to his location at eight in the morning at about 11 a.m. We went to go get inventory. We dropped it off and came back by 12 for the lunch rush. At about 4 p.m., he closes the concession stands, takes it to his location, and then goes to work at the kiosk until 9 p.m. Then after that, he preps the food for the next day and repeats that six days a week. And I asked him, you're grinding, you're following your dreams, 
But here's the worst part about the concession stand business. Joseph, man, like, I'm gonna be sure up honest with you. This seems like a pretty easy gig, uh, but I'm sure it has its difficulties. Oh, man, it is. What's uh, one thing you don't like about this? Like, one struggle. One struggle, what I don't like about this, this business specifically, well, I love the business, but what I don't like is it's rain. I don't like rain. Oh, it, it kills your business. Yeah, it puts me off. Like last week, it rained like all week, so imagine not working for a whole week. Ooh. But Whatever, but like I say, December and January, it's the slowest time, so. Almost every business, man. So for anybody trying to do this, I suggest I mean, you rack up whatever you can in the summertime, and then you, uh, and then uh, prepare for the hard time. Then, I get you, man, I get you. It's kind of tough when you know. Here's one of the scariest things every entrepreneur experiences, the fear of investing. And I'm not talking about a few hundred or a few thousand dollars. Joseph invested 23,000 on a new business with his partner. And was it a smart decision? Let's find out. So you just invested what, 23,000 on the kiosk? Yeah, I partnered up with somebody and I invested that much money and uh... Oh man, were you scared? Were, were, before you invested, were you like, oh, should I really do this? Yeah, well, you know, should I really do it or should, you know, should something hold me back, but you know... You went for it? Yeah, I mean, scare money don't make no money, you know? You gotta be willing to take a risk. Sca know? Scare money don't make any money. Man, you busting out the quotes today, Joseph! <laughs> Dang, I don't know which one I'm gonna pick! Of course, he invested 23000 on the kiosk which we're gonna check out later, but so far, in a couple months, it already made, what, 60,000? Roughly, yep. Right, like, gross, yep. Another thing about being the boss of your own business, when something goes wrong, or you're missing something, guess who has to go get it, or go fix it? They just called me, they said they ran out of sugar. Gotta oh. go get more, at the mall. Gotta go get much more sugar. Oh, oh the kiosk mall? Yeah. So we're gonna go down there next. Oh, bro, what about the gas, bro? And I'm gonna have to pump more, bro. Woo! There you go, there you go. At the level where I'm at right now, it's just, it's just part of it. I'm my own supplier, you know? I don't have a guy that brings me my merchandise. Not yet, you know? I don't have a distribution, you know? But I'm my, I'm, I am my distribution. Gotta do what we gotta do, man. Gotta do it. So here we are, Joseph, ready for a lunch rush? Yep, a little, little crowd, so. Let's get it, let's, let's get see it. how busy it gets. Step into my circle with the opposite of Urkel. When I pull up flying purple, people eaters could not bite me. I feel the fate of Herschel. And I just leave them on the limb and hand them up. And this is rappers of walking that I already killed them. Skin blanco, lyrical weapon kicking like a bronco. Head honcho, spherical presence came from the ground. So we're talking right here about um, people who want instant success. They want to have a business. Mm -hmm and be successful tomorrow. And Joseph, what do you think about that, man? You think it's possible? Nah, man, it's not gonna happen overnight. Not gonna happen overnight. Nothing right? overnight. If you wanna open up a business, you wanna start the entrepreneur life, I suggest you prepare for failure and hope for success, you know? And what if you do fail? Then what? You get back up again and do it again. Start all over. Man, I love that quote. What was it? Prepare for failure? Yeah, prepare for failure and hope for success. There you go. It doesn't get any more honest than that, man. Hey Joseph, how much gas you put, bro? What's up? How much gas did you put? Nah, just ten bucks, bro. Yeah, I gave me about like uh, maybe like two, three days worth of gas. And there you go for everybody who's asking, but is. What about the gas? Jo Joseph don't know my slogans. Hey, you never seen it in my videos, huh? Uh, not yet. So no. let me ask you, what you agree to this? Um, I mean, opportunities, you know, opportunities. I'm pretty famous in Utah, bro. Really? Yeah. I got, uh, my, I got a brother-in-law that's in Utah. Oh, he probably knows me. Let him know. So. Hey, you know, raised entrepreneur, he's gonna be like, Yee. So Joseph is gonna share with us what you need to start your own little concession, and I think this, this is probably the same thing as getting a taco truck, probably. Yeah. yeah. All the same steps. So the first thing you need to do is uh, obviously buy the car, a mobile food vending, a car or, or a trailer. The first thing you got to do is get a, a business petition statement, so bu uh, publish your, your business name, yeah. then go to your city, wherever city you're at, get a business license and a stack, uh, a state uh, tax certificate. After that, you got all those three, you call your local health department and then uh, you set up an appointment for them to come and inspect your, your cart. Once they give you the permit, once they give you the sticker, or whatever other sticker you guys got in your local counties, um, 
you're golden, you're ready you're to go. You're set. Now, that's the easy part. Now, how about finding a location? Finding a location is going to be a little tough. Um, you gotta. You also got to go through your city, like whatever city you're from. You got to let them know, hey, I want to, I plan on setting this up here. Can I do it? You know, because sometimes some is private property, some is city's property. Seems complicated, man, to be honest with you. Seems like a lot of work. I mean, it, it, it is a lot of work, dude, but you just got to have the drive and do it. You know? So, so you got to be serious about this. Yeah, you got to be serious. It's easier said than done. Mm -hmm. You know, but you got to just stick to it. Like, if you want to do something, just stick to it and, and keep going. All right, Joseph. So here's a question everybody wants to know, man. It's almost the end of the day. Yeah. How much money do you think we made today, roughly? Uh, it was an alright day, man. It's decent, better than nothing. Better than nothing, huh? Yeah. Better than working a regular job. Where you have to where you have to ask permission to use the restroom, bro. Not here. 58. How much is that so far? That's uh 458. 458. 29 bucks in cards. 29? 487. 487. For the day. A good, good day for a slow day. For slow season, yeah. For slow winter time, yeah. His next revenue stream is a kiosk in the mall where he sells roasted pecans and walnuts. But this business isn't for everybody because there's one thing you have to get over to be successful in this business. Well, in any business. Let me ask you a question, bro. How do you deal with rejection? Cause rejection? you're getting rejected a lot, bro. It's part of the game, dude. Part of the game. That's it. You just keep asking. There's, so, there's gonna be like ten no's and like two yeses. So, but that's part of the game. Part of the game, dude. You gotta fish them out of the crowd. Just picture this as a little river. Yeah. You just right here with your little fishing. You gotta get them out. Bring them back oh. to the kiosk and you close them. Joseph. What do you want to promote, bro? Yeah, man, come down to Fashion Fair Mall. We're right here located uh, at the Cinnamon Roasted Nuts uh, kiosk. And we're right here right in front of Victoria's Secret. So whenever you guys are shopping for some Christmas gifts, stop by. We'll, we'll That's you right. Out. Get your girlfriend something. And on the way, buy some nuts. Yeah, there you go.